Manhattan, a city that never sleeps. Especially in many days. A lot of crazy stuff going on in those days. <coughs> you see what I mean? I'm nothing more than a old detective who is late to pay his rent and have to use his apartment as an office. I have too much free time, so all I do in these days is playing Kirby games. They all say it's easy, but for me it's really hard. I thought that I really have to give up and switch job to an app developer or something like that. But then, finally, I got my fifth client for months. All I saw was the shadow of a mare, but I knew when I turn around, she will be gorgeous. Hello there. I'm Mark and you're cutting your job. Ah! I'm a nine! What the heck is this? You don't like it? I'm up to bread and touch my eyes. That's not what I meant! Why did you just phone to a beautiful mare? My body does not have that kind of function. But I saw you transform to Iron Man like two episodes ago! It was a frame sequence, sir. R right. Can you at least change your voice? Yes, I have a function I have, sir. Can you yet feel a voice to be free? Hello there. I hope that you're good in your job. And I ask her nicely. What kind of job? A murder? And she told me. No, just a case you need to review for me. A review case. There are a lot of ponies who could do this job better than me. But from all of them, she had to choose me. Don't I have a problem with that? But compared to a murder, this is going to be easy peasy. Hello and welcome back to the second episode of The Rare Elogy! This time, Red is taking the role as a noir detective to prove that she's innocent in Murder Investigates. But we already can solve this mystery better than Piki in Mystery of the Friendship Express? Let's all take our magnifying glasses and start examining this episode. So the episode begin with... Where the last one ended? In Catalan Carousel? Huh. Nice community. So I already prepared her new line of dresses. I modeled them after the adventures of Shadow Spade. Her stories are always full of mystery and suspense and best of all... Fabulous costumes! Then Rainbow Dash show up to take a part of Princess Celestia Royal Garden opening. Oh yes! Rumor has it the gardens are especially lush this season. I've heard that the Wonderbolts will be kicking things off with an aerial display. Technically, I'm not flying. I'm just the lucky reserve who was called in to be the backup flyer in case a Wonderbolt can't perform. Ooh, the grindstones I ordered! If there was any way you could squeeze in one more little delivery, I would be eternally grateful. If you put baking soda and vinegar together, they make a little volcano. So after that, we're going to do our garden opening, and there, we're going to meet our retired Watermont veteran, Windrider. Windrider, I see you met Rainbow Dash. She's one of our most promising reserves. She just might beat your record. Really now? Here's the culprit. Open 9! No spoilers! What spoilers, sir? I'm not the type of that's sure to hit the culprit. It's obvious it's the main thing in the entire story games. Okay, I admit mean, it's obvious it's the main job in all Super Mario games, but don't break the illusion. It's not about who's the culprit, it's how he's the culprit. And besides, if Scooby Doo managed to survive the past 47 years with that premise, so can we. So next day, Rarity Company Rainbow in watching the Wonderbots performance and making more shipping. There she goes! Good luck! So Ryan passed by, tell that Spitfire had to go to deal with her sick mom, so Rainbow has to take her place. I'm gonna get to fly with Wind Riders and the Wonderbots, cause I'm the sickest and I'm office and they know it. Uh, Rainbow Dash? Better have this, darling. But then Spitfire and Mom show up, and every pony believe that some pony said Spitfire a fake note. Why would any pony want that? Maybe. 
so they could take her spot. Then what about the V-Pony? Only at using some pony without any evidence whatsoever! Okay, they do give her a chance to prove her innocence, or she get kicked from the water bots. FOREVER! But how am I gonna prove I didn't send a letter that I didn't send? With me! Detective Ravagey is on the case, and we are going to get to the bottom of this faster than my costume change! Oh, is that a challenge I hear? <laughs> Accept your challenge! Whoever changed more costume wins! The loser has to wear a costume by the winner's choice! Oh, it is on! Elementary, my dear Albert. I just have to speed up. That's all. So let's not investigate this murder. I know, but be more cool like that. So ready to start investigating. As you can see, they're doing a parody of film noir. Film noir. It's a famous genre film from the 1940s. It's famous for its detective stories, deadly women, and doomed heroes or anti-heroes. We can see in this episode that they use everything that resembles to a film noir, including black and white moments, smooth jazz, and inner monologues. Rainbow Dash was questioning my methods, but I knew what I was doing. Do you? Oh, oh, oh. Did I say that one out loud? Okay, almost inner monologues. So now let's check how the investigation going. It starts in Spitfire Room. She discovered an envelope with a piece of Mabel's men and gets fascinating from the decor of the curtains. Then, she decided to interrogate the royal guards. Captain, sir! He is the world's greatest detective. Perhaps I should take it from here? Holy moly! Uh, I mean, holy moly. So during the interrogation, we discovered that the life of royal guards are pretty dull, and they had a break when someone gave them cake. What? They got a free cake? That's not fair! What do you complain? They at least do their job! I'm doing my job too! Laying 8 hours on Pokemon Go does not count! Hey! I at least managed to get enough pitches to level up! It's not my fault that we got nothing to do in this day! <coughs> By Discord Beard! There's a blast right in Celestia's bathroom! Um, I don't think you should go there. Oh, what do you know? Blastoise, here I come! Oh, hello there, your highness. Any chances to a blizzard in the- Ah! Oh, oh. Just as I thought, it's still Celestia's best time. Oh, oh, oh. Well, I guess I'm back to my boss now. Why are you so mad about you never know the time? <laughs> Next, Freddy goes to the cake shop to know who purchased this delicious cake, only to find out that whoever bought it was hiding his identity, except winning a scalp that's standing chocolate and have a deep raspy voice. So after all this, Rarity find out who the culprit is. Some pony sent Spitfire away and framed Rainbow Dash for it. And that pony was none other than... Wind Rider! Bum, bum, bum. Rarity, I can't believe you would accuse Wind Rider of framing me! He's a living legend for pony's sake! OBJECTION! Living legend on my flank! This guy is totally guilty! What is happening right now? OBJECTION! Don't even bother! All the evidence points to Rainbow Dash as the one who sent Spitfire away! We got a letter filled with Rainbow Hair! Hold it! Those pieces of hair didn't fall out! They were cut! <laughs> Plus! Randy discovered that the envelope was smell of Juniper Phoenix! A clone that our witness here is using! Plus! One of the current in Spitfire Room were unfrared, which means some pony were hiding them so they won't get cut. Am I right, Wind Rider? <laughs> Ugly! Ugly with my coat! Mr. Rider, what do you have to say to this? Juniper Phoenix is a very popular fragrance, and any pony could have moved those curtains. That's right! You need more evidence than that! Don't worry, Edgy. I got more! Take that! Rarity decided to question the custard guard and then told her they took a break to eat a chocolate cherry cake with crusted filling and buttercream frosting rosettes. And there's only one bakery in catalog that sent that cake. Cinnamon Chai Tea and Cake Shop. And? Well, the pony who bought the cake had a stand of his scarf from the cake, which is the same scarf the wig man is wearing. <laughs> Gee, how do we miss that? This is preposterous. 
You don't believe a word of this, right? Well, it's all good at all, but you forgot one critical thing. The motive. Why did he frame Memodesh? Well, can you explain that? Yes, I can, Yona. Take that! We get it to the beginning of the episode. It was because he was afraid that you would break his long-distance Wonderbolt record. I heard him when Spitfire said you were close to breaking his record. He said, and I quote, <laughs> That's the polite but disingenuous laugh you make when you want to seem happy, but really, you're not. So here's the motive, edgy boy. Do not call me edgy. Says it, Wing Mother. You are the culprit. Fine. You caught me. I did it. There you go. Cost adjourned. That's my line. Ow. Anyone else want to throw things at me? <laughs> I was only kidding! Nice shot! Man, that was exhausting! Shoot! Well, there's investigating in this game, and a lot of detective characters, so it's totally count! Of course not! Why did you feel? <laughs> oh, Gamsu! <laughs> so Ramatesh retrieves Speedfire back in the speed of light, and Wing Rider gets his just dessert. We're attempting to frame Rainbow Dash. I hereby strip you of your wonderful status! And it would have gone away with that if one for those meddling ponies and their dog! I said, if you wanted for those meddling ponies and their dog! I'll be nine! That's a cue! I really don't want to go this far. You will? Cause this what you get for using the Makatama on me! Fine! Well? Scooby, scooby, scooby. See? Was that hard? Aw, oh, that's so sweet of you. Now get back to work! Epic so the episode ends with Rainbow performing with the waterboards as Remedy watching and glad what she did. This was a very entertaining episode with a good mystery. Okay, it's true that it was too easy to know who the culprit is and he got confessed for his crime was too fast, but unlike Mystery on the Fresh of a Space, it was way better about doing a parody of film noir. Remedy was at her best as a detective, even if it was look like she easily getting over attention to other things. In order to solve the mystery, we had to be focused, driven, 100% in the- Ooh! The damask pattern on these curtains is exquisite! Oh, and this velvet rope holder, oh, it's just- We don't have time to look at the decor! And that's pretty much what I can say! The plot was simple, but they managed to entertain us the whole episode. So even Fat Ben Investigates was an easy mystery to solve, it was fun to watch, and I recommend it to all royalty fans. Which reminds me, really only changed 5 costume, well I changed 6, so I won! I'm sure you don't mind wearing this outfit, eh? Detective Gumty? Oh, come on! Don't be such a... Reviewing cases. Our responses were the easy one compared to the murders. But after our hard work and effort, all of what you get in the end is small views. Now that I have fun with it, I at least get some attention. But I wish the reward I get for this case won't at all up to fix my broken bones and eat out bleeding I got right now. So until I get my conscience back and get out for the hospital, again, I'm not 20, and I'll see you soon.